Cop the Recruit is another DS game that never got a fair shake. It saw players filling the role of one Dan Miles, a former street racer who cleans up his act and becomes part of the newly formed Criminal Overturn program. Now Cop the Recruit is a real showcase for the handheld. On paper, it's a game that just shouldn't be possible on the DS. But somehow, the team over at Velez made it happen. And sure, there are a few shortcomings, but what they achieved is incredible. It's essentially an open world shooter, very much in the vein of Grand Theft Auto. All of Manhattan, Queens and parts of Jersey are all rendered in full 3D, with plenty of traffic and pedestrians to make it feel like a believable space. The city is filled with many dynamic effects such as steaming sewer vents, smokestacks, real-time weather and reflection mapping not only on the cars but some of the buildings as well. And to top this off, it's all delivered at a blistering 60 frames per second. Now when it comes to gameplay, you'll find yourself exploring on foot or using a range of vehicles from cars to trucks and boats to get to your destination. The controls are simple and easy to pick up, but when it comes to the shooting sections, this is where things can get tricky. Once you pull out a weapon, the camera shifts to an over-the-shoulder perspective, with the aiming being controlled on the touchscreen similar to a first-person shooter like Metroid Prime. You'd think this would let you point and shoot anywhere you want to, but it's not that simple. You can only hit an enemy when your crosshair turns red, regardless of whether your crosshair is on him or not. This leads to many situations where you and your enemy just stop to shoot at each other, which can take a lot of the excitement out of each encounter. This aspect does let the game down a bit, but it's not to the point of complete disarray. If you can look past its issues, Cop the Recruit would make a welcome addition to any DS owner's collection. When it comes to shooters on the DS, there's not too many options for players who are fans of the genre. Developer Shinen looked to fill this void with an often overlooked game known as Nanostring. Whilst the first outing was decent, it was plagued with cumbersome touch controls and a severe lack of difficulty. With its sequel, it takes everything that was learned from the first outing and builds upon nearly every aspect to create what is quite possibly one of the best shooters available. Now unlike most games in the genre, Nano Stray 2 actually possesses a pretty decent story. It's not going to win any awards, but it's a nice inclusion nonetheless. Nano Stray 2 has all the basics of a shoot 'em up You have your special weapons, including but not limited to a laser, homing lasers and bombs. You have waves of enemies coming after you. You have big bosses at the end of each level, and when you raise the difficulty, there's more and more bullets to avoid. Now when going through the levels, you'll be armed with a basic attack, one special weapon and two satellites, which will help do some of your dirty work for you. Before you start each level, you're able to select your ship speed from one of three different options, which is a sort of compensation for the lack of an analog control. Depending on the level, you'll either be playing horizontally or vertically, as waves of enemies appear and you shoot them down. Defeated enemies drop yellow coins that give you points, that can be spent on various upgrades that will help you in your fight. In the middle of each stage, there's a mini boss, followed by a boss at the end, and this is where the game really comes into its own. They each provide a good challenge and are all designed well, so simply just just blasting your way through won't do. A sense of strategy is required in order to advance due to the sheer amount of threats that are thrown your way. If you're on the lookout for a shooter on the DS, Nano Stray 2 is a solid choice. Trackmania was originally ported from the PC to the DS in 2009. Two years later, an updated version of the popular racer was released, sporting many improvements that made the first game a bit disappointing on the handheld, mainly the physics engine which received a complete overhaul, resulting in a much more responsive gameplay experience and the inclusion of several online modes that prolonged the life of the game. From races to multiplayer and best of all the ability to create your tracks, Trackmania Turbo is one hell of of a package. At its core, it's a simple racing game that boasts over 130 tracks for the player to enjoy and a huge variety of vehicles in which to do so. In terms of gameplay, Trackmania offers the player three modes of play that include race, platform and puzzle. Now race is basically getting from point A to B, but the clock is your enemy. On the other hand, with platform and puzzle, it opens up some truly unique gameplay. Platform removes the clock and only penalizes the player if they crash or fail to perform one of the ridiculous jumps or loops. Lastly, you've got the puzzle mode that gives the player a half-finished track and using your stylus you need to ensure that the circuit is complete by selecting from a series of pieces. The real star of the show though is the insane
same track editor that naturally allows you to create your own circuits from scratch. It does take a while to get used to the incredible amount of tools at your fingertips, but after some time you'll be creating tracks with ease, with a nice touch being the ability to share them with your friends. Graphically, it's a simple looking game, with some neat environments that include a stadium, island, snow and a coastal track. And at first the locations are a little dull, but as you progress they improve, as do the stunts and loops that you need to race with. If you're a racing fan and are on the hunt for something to pass the time with on your DS, Trackmania Turbo is bound to impress. Much like the WarioWare series that inspired it, Rhythm Heaven focuses on quick, simplistic gameplay with catchy tunes spliced in. What sets it apart from other members of the musical genre, such as Guitar Hero, Rock Band and even Wii Music, is the depth and ingenuity applied to each level. Instead of hitting a variety of instrumental notes to play along with or manipulate a song, Rhythm Heaven has the player harness the tempo, beat and ultimately the overall rhythm of each piece in order to guide themselves through the multiple stages by tapping, sliding and flicking the stylus in time with the music and on-screen cues, they'll fulfill each objective laid before them in some of the craziest ways imaginable. You'll find yourself clapping along with an audience of monkeys, rocking and rolling with a trio of ghosts, and even popping dumplings into a hungry monk's mouth. Aside from the 24 main bite-sized games, there's an array of distinct challenges such as the remix stages, which play out like boss-like portions of the game, and will put the player's rhythm skills to the ultimate test. Visually, the hand-drawn graphics nicely reflect the mood portrayed by the rhythm and grooves at hand. It's not too often that a developer can get away with what are essentially big-headed stick figures with a black and white pencil sketch flair, but the moment that they all begin bopping to the beat, it becomes obvious that the designers made the right call. Although its length may not span more than a couple of days, Rhythm Heaven is bursting with plenty of excuses to keep playing after the main game is long over. Bonus material aside, Attempting superb ranks or even awaiting a chance to grab an elusive perfect stamp adds hours of extra tapping and submission to the rhythm. If you're at all familiar with the likes of Burnout, you'll instantly feel right at home with Sideswiped. It's essentially the same premise as the game that clearly inspired it, but in a few ways it manages to surpass it by adding some fresh new ideas to the formula that it can call its own. At its centre, it's all about ramming the other cars that occupy the track. A majority of the game modes will see you doing this, with only a few being that of pure racing. The several modes on offer will see you either going solo or against other cars to get points, and for some of them, you may May need to crash into enemy cars to get those points. In others, it may be ramming into objects on the streets. There's also the racing mode, which involves either racing by yourself or against the AI. And last but not least, there's challenges that offer a set of objectives that have unique rules. After a game is done, you'll earn cash depending on how many points you racked up. You can then spend this money on buying or upgrading new cars, which will see you making them faster, stronger, or having a longer boost meter, as well as buying cars ranging from fans to armor with trucks. Now when it comes to control, it's very arcadey, which makes it incredibly accessible and open to players of all ages. It doesn't take long to master at all, but each vehicle you drive manages to feel distinct from one to the next. On the visual front, Sideswiped is in a league of its own. May it be the highly detailed cars or the expansive environments, it's truly impressive how it looks. Sure, there is a bit of slowdown now and again, but it's nothing that takes away from the overall experience. If you're on the lookout for something new to add to your DS collection. Sideswiped is well worth considering. Ever since the first game on the Nintendo 64, Super Smash Bros has become one of Nintendo's most successful franchises, and we wouldn't see a portable version until the release of the 3DS. This is where Gambarian jumped in to fill the gap, with their often overlooked Smash clone on the DS, Jump Ultimate Stars. Swapping out the cast of Nintendo's catalogue for a range of anime favourites resulted in one of the most enjoyable takes on the popular fighting mashup. It's simple to play, but with enough depth for those willing to explore it. And in terms of attack, you have three options, a standard, a slightly heavier one, as well as a special skill, the latter being limited to the amount of special gauges you can fill during each fight. But it's not only simply about fighting, a huge aspect that makes up the game is the added card system. Now despite how much of a turn off that sounds, it doesn't quite turn out as you would expect. Unlike any other conventional fighting game, you don't actually select individual characters, instead you select decks which are all made up of 20 cards. 
However, the only disappointing element about this system is that it takes ages to unlock the really cool stuff. Basically, you've got to pay to unlock new cards by using the in-game gems that you acquire from the story mode. Getting enough gems does take a while, so you'll need a lot of time and a lot of patience if you want to be able to use all of the cards in the game. Overall, Jump Ultimate Stars can be best described as the closest thing to a Smash Bros game to appear on the DS. If you can get over the language barrier or deal with it at least, then you've got one of the best games to play on the handheld. Hundreds of characters, heaps of replay value, multiplayer, addictive gameplay, at first glance, it's easy to just dismiss Fossil Fighters as a simple Pokemon clone. But if you were to do so, you'd be doing yourself a huge disservice, as it's a game that manages to take its influences and run with them in a completely different direction. Now, the storyline is pretty standard. You play as a young boy who travels to a place known as Vivasaur Island, which is well known for its fossil battles. Your dream is to become a fighter yourself, and eventually become the greatest of all time. Now, the game has three main features that compose most of the gameplay. The first is finding fossils. You're equipped with a pickaxe and a sonar, and you will have to use these tools to locate fossils littered around the island. As you level up, you'll be able to travel to more locations, allowing you to find a much more varied amount of them. The next feature is actually cleaning the fossils that you find. To do this, you'll have to use your stylus to hammer and drill away at the rock that surrounds the fossil. To keep things interesting, you have a limited amount of time to reveal as much of the fossil as possible. The better you clean, the more powerful your Vivisaur will be. You'll be able to take 5 Vivisaurs with you into battle, leaving you to strategize and come up with your own tactics that you think will be best for the fight. Some of your team have powerful attacks and status alignments, while others may be weaker but provide support effects, which will either enhance your own abilities or hinder your enemy. As you battle, your Vivisaurs will level up and become more powerful, and at the end of each chapter, you will have the opportunity of increasing your fighter rank. Although it never quite reaches the heights of its contemporaries like Pokemon, Fossil Fighters is still well worth picking up. When it comes to handheld versions of multi-platform games, there's always a danger of it simply being an afterthought or a downright cash-in. With Mini Ninjas on the DS though, that is not the case. While it does share much in common with the Wii version, it manages to carve out its own identity and create a completely unique experience separate from its home counterpart. Whilst the story and basic premise of the game stayed the same, the levels themselves are completely original and play to the strengths of the DS itself. Now the game sees you controlling up to three ninjas as you set out to defeat an evil samurai warlord who is responsible for upsetting the delicate balance of nature. The DS version is more of an action game than the console versions. There's no ninja stealth here. You must simply just clear out enemies wherever you go. To this end, you hit the A button to perform a basic attack or hold it down to release it for a charged up power attack. Pressing X uses selected ninja weapons like blow darts or shuriken, and pressing Y allows you to cast a selected magical spell after aiming it. When it comes to traversal, you have the ability to execute wall jumps and wall running, but these are more for exploring, and do take a little patience to get right because of the unforgiving timing. If I'm being honest, the basic combat does feel rather simple, but this is more than made up for with the several boss fights that litter the adventure. They incorporate the entire spectrum of options you have, and really Really put your skills to the test. Admittedly, the DS version of Mini Ninjas does have its flaws. The controls aren't that seamless, especially when it comes to wall jumping, and it's a much more logical, action oriented title than the other Mini Ninja games. But it does manage to be a unique and meaningful adventure, so if you're stuck for games to play on the DS, Mini Ninjas would be a great choice. There are plenty of solid RPGs on the DS, but one that never really gets the recognition it deserves has to be Infinite Space. There is so much to this little package that you'll have a hard time believing it's on the DS. It manages to weave a tale that not only spans numerous galaxies, but time itself as well. Naturally, you'll come across a cast of lovable NPCs that all help flesh out the believability of the universe, and even though they may not be as well developed as the main cast, you'll still end up getting attached. 
If I'm being honest, I didn't think much of the battle system at first, but it's clear after some time that it's a lot deeper than what first meets the eye. You control your space fleet as you battle another, and you need to keep track of three different things. First, the distance between your fleets and the respective range of your weaponry. Second, your own command gauge, which when filled allows you to issue commands such as firing and dodging. Finally, the enemy's own command gauge, which tells you exactly what moves they can make. It employs a sort of rock-paper-scissors mechanic, where dodges work against barrages and regular fire is weak but cannot be dodged. Now characters do not level up, and instead the spotlight is put on your fleet, which can be fully customised and upgraded over the course of the game. There's about 60 different models of ships to acquire, which can mainly be done by spending the money you've earned on several parts or entirely new ships as a whole. This adds a nice amount of depth to the combat system, and the difficulty of the game will force you to learn it if you want to succeed, because simply just buying stronger ships is not always the best option. Overall, Infinite Space is one of the biggest, most ambitious RPGs on the Nintendo DS. If you're looking for something to sink your teeth into, Infinite Space has got you covered. Atlas has truly mastered the art of developing sleeper hits. There's many games from the company's back catalogue that just never received the love they deserved. One of them being Radiant Historia. It sees you taking on the role of Stoke as you work to end a war between the two kingdoms of Alistil and Ganorg as the two factions fight over what precious little land remains. It's up to Stoke and his band of companions to change history in order to restore the true future and save the world. Now time itself manages to play a huge role throughout the adventure. With Stoke having the ability to move forward and backward through time, the device which makes this possible is a powerful book with a dark and mysterious origin. Of course, many RPGs live or die by their battle system, and Atlas put a fresh spin on this one. The enemies occupy a 3x3 grid on the left side of the battle screen, and they can move back and forth between the rows. Enemies in the front row will deal more damage than the same enemy in the back. However, the back row offers increased defense. There are even certain formations or alignments of enemies which greatly enhance their stats. Fortunately, Atlas does not expect you to simply sit there and take what the enemy dishes out. Each playable character has certain skills which move opponents around on the grid. One character might push a soldier from the front row to the back, whilst another character sideswipes a soldier, moving him from the top row to the bottom. You can even stack multiple enemies on a single cell of the grid, and any attacks on that cell will affect any enemy who stands upon it. Now visually, Radiant Historia is a real looker on the DS. It utilizes polished 16-bit sprites against 3D scenery to create a beautiful hybrid of that classic console RPG. Feel. Of course, all of the characters themselves as well as the enemies are intricately designed and fit the world perfectly. If you're looking to get into an RPG on the DS, Radiant Historia will not disappoint. Well that does it for today's video. Keep an eye out for part 2 as that will be coming up very soon, so don't forget to hit subscribe and tick all that bell. You can follow me on all of the socials to stay up to date on future videos as well, and to take part in giveaways. You can also join our growing community on Discord and meet many like-minded gamers to continue the conversation with. I'd like to give a special shout out to our Patreon supporters Rhino, Skill Jim, Nano, Steve, Richard, Daniel and Paddy J for their continued support that helps make these videos possible. If you're interested in in joining our Discord or supporting the channel through Patreon, you'll find the links in the description. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch the video, I'll see you in the next one.